Hello everyone. We are going to be talking about gut health, which is like the burning topic, right? That has been happening, gut and brain connection, so many different things. But we specifically want to talk about different problems that you could have, like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, with Dr. Roxanne Ramlal. She is a naturopathic doctor and she calls herself, um, you know, what do you say, a gladiator, right? Yeah, uh, this gut health gladiator. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. So yeah, welcome Dr. Roxanne. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here and talk about something that a lot of people don't always feel comfortable talking about. So let's, you know, the more we can talk about it and put it out there, the more people can feel comfortable Absolutely. talking about their gut health. So which one? Do you want to talk about uh, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, or, 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 or general gut health? How do we get started? You know what? The thing is, is that some of these are really, they can happen at the same time and they're related. But, you know, common things that come up are bloating, are constipation, and those things are very much linked. But also just to get people an understanding of what a, a healthy gut looks like anyway. So I feel like we can, we can touch on those areas because they're very much, you know, linked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so healthy gut means having a healthy poop, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as a naturopathic doctor focuses in gut health, poop, that's what I need to talk about. And there is, you know, so many times when my patients will apologize and they'll say, oh, sorry, this may be too much information when they're about to tell me about their bowel movements. But I say, no, we need to, I need to know this. And as a naturopathic doctor, we, this is really helpful information. So when we think about a healthy gut, and what that would look like and what people can help to identify what that means mm -hmm. is that you're having a bowel movement mm -hmm. at least once a day. Because sometimes when I speak to people, they'll say, oh yeah, no, I think everything's good. I, I'm pretty regular. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so how many times are you, uh, or how mm -hmm. often are you going per day? Oh, I don't go every day. <laughs> and that right there is an issue. And that the, that's the awareness, right? Some people don't realize that that may not be normal because it's their normal. It's what's common for them. So a healthy gut, when it comes to talking about poop, is having one bowel, at least one bowel movement every day. Mm -hmm. And the bowel movement itself, it should be easy to pass. There's no straining. You don't have, there's no pain as well. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, again, people are, are not really used to looking at their stool. But mm -hmm. sometimes as a naturopathic doctor, I have to tell them, I need you to take a better look. Because if there's blood, if mm -hmm. there's mucus, if there's undigested food, those are all signs that things are not um, working well in their digestive system. Mm -hmm. You know, if the stool is sticking to the bowl, like there's a there's a lot of things that it may not really come up as like, okay, well, it doesn't really, it doesn't really impact me or I don't really think about it mm -hmm. because it depends on how they're feeling on a day to day. They may not be putting the two together. So, you know, a healthy gut is also, there's minimal bloating. Mm -hmm. So, or, you know, minimal, it's okay once in a while, but excessive, meaning like you're feeling like the, your belly is like, coming out distended you you can't wear the clothing that you want to wear anymore mm -hmm. i have clients who say there's a certain amount of my clothing that are just put away to the side because i can't wear them yeah. because i get bloated constantly mm -hmm. and if i'm and and that's something that i experienced too before i became mm -hmm. a naturopathic doctor i was dealing a lot with um gut health mm -hmm. issues and that's one of the reasons that really brought me into this you know focus because i want to be able to feel help people feel confident because mm -hmm. you know starting out your day wearing this outfit going to work and then by the time afternoon or evening mm -hmm. you're like uh oh like this is showing how bloated i am and you're not too sure why and you don't really understand what causing it yes you know we want people to feel as as confident as they can so minimal bloating and you know no acid reflux or feeling mm -hmm. of belching and burping so those are just some basic things that people can understand when mm -hmm. we talk about what is a healthy gut look like sure so let's just uh, we have a question also coming but before that let's just understand what should the normal poop should should look like you know and there's a bristol myers chart uh, you know uh, that people can look online yeah but it should not be little pellets right and should no. not be kind of whatever exactly right what yeah. should be the uh what should our poop look like 
right? Absolutely. You made a great point with the Bristol stool chart because that's something that is a visual to, and people can go and check that out online as well, is that I use to help people identify. So a normal poop is a type four on the Bristol stool chart. And that's basically like a long, complete cylinder. Okay. And, you know, it can have an S pattern, but it doesn't have to. What we don't want to see is something like you mentioned, of mm -hmm. small, they call it like rabbit poop, like small pellets, mm -hmm. or having something that's m more of a really loose floating, um, mm -hmm. a lot of pieces, like basically it's not, it, it doesn't have to be full diarrhea, yeah. but it can be very loose stool. So having that on a regular basis, and you know, mm -hmm. it's giving us an idea there's not enough fiber in the dye, but more importantly, it looks like you're, you're not absorbing as much as you should be because things are going through so fast through their, your digestive tract that there's no opportunity for it to firm up. So right. that can give people an idea. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I know quite a few people are watching you. You're welcome to ask questions. The question that's coming up right now is what would you suggest to improve gut health? Mm -hmm. So in terms of gut health, we as naturopathic doctors look at what the underlying cause is. Mm -hmm. We need to have an idea of what symptoms are presenting, but mm -hmm. also what's causing those symptoms. So in the situation of constipation, let's say, mm -hmm. um, constipation can be caused by, as a naturopathic doctor, mm -hmm. you want to look at underlying things such as thyroid, right? Low thyroid function is mm -hmm. associated, one of the symptoms associated with um, hypothyroidism is constipation. Mm -hmm. There can also be use of, let's say, antibiotics, whether it's mm -hmm. frequent use for other things. It could be mm -hmm. sinus infections, you know, urinary tract infections. And that use of antibiotics, while it's, of course, necessary for, you know, that mm -hmm. critical infection you had, but it wipes out all of the good bacteria that you need in your gut in order pr to produce what we call a very healthy microbiome. Mm -hmm. So if there's a disruption in the level of good bacteria to bad bacteria, mm -hmm. that can absolutely be a reason that your gut health is not optimal. Mm -hmm. That could show up as constipation, but mm -hmm. it could also show up as other things. So. So looking at that, you know, medications, there's certain medications that people need to be on, whether it's for blood pressure, whether it's for depression, but they have side effects of constipation. So we need to work around that. You know, we're never going to take away medications, but we need to understand, hmm, what's going on? What else is there? And then diet nutrition is so important fundamental mm -hmm. so as a naturopathic doctor you are definitely going to hear those questions first what is your diet look like let's take a deep dive and what is your hydration because sometimes the most simple things are what can be used first right mm -hmm. and ha making sure someone is drinking enough water for their body weight mm -hmm. so what i say about that is take your weight mm -hmm. in pounds mm -hmm. divide that by half Mm -hmm. And that amount is what you should be drinking in ounces because everyone's different. You know, mm -hmm. we hear randomly like, sure, get your eight cups, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure that it's adequate for that individual. So having healthy foods that are really helpful for the microbiome. So mm -hmm. having a lot of probiotics, which can be fermented foods like, mm -hmm. um, you know, kimchi, whether it's kefir, whether it's any type of pickled vegetables, um, dairy, if you can tolerate it, because also mm -hmm. food sensitivities could be a reason constipation mm -hmm. can happen, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, there's so many, so many things and just a lot of fruits and vegetables. A lot of people are are not having as much as they think they should be. Mm -hmm. And processed and packaged foods are, are a lot of what people go to, right, in order, mm -hmm. especially when they're um, you know, in a rush, you know, they're busy with life and we need to evaluate and make sure there's a lot of healthy foods that are feeding that um, gut. Sure. And then herbs, as a naturopathic doctor, I'm sure you also deal with a lot of herbs. What are the common herbs that, that you use? You know, we'll talk about constipation right now and then we can also come to bloating and diarrhea later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, herbs, when you think about herbs, you want to make sure that because there's there's this idea that herbs are just natural and you can use it and it's no problem. However, mm -hmm. when we think about certain herbs that are used as stimulating laxatives for constipation, senna, let's say, this is not something that people 
should be using often. Why? Mm -hmm. It creates laziness within your intestines, meaning your bowels will say, okay, this herb is doing the work for me. I don't need to work. And that can actually perpetuate. Mm -hmm. So when we think about that, there's things we need to stay away from or things that should only be used for very sparingly. Mm -hmm. But other things that are really helpful is to take in um, herbs that are soothing to the digestive tract. So when you think about fennel, when you think about chamomile, mm -hmm. these are things that allow to decrease bloating because bloating is something that happens with constipation, mm -hmm. but also with um, you know certain demulsants. Demulsants are things that soothe the digestive tract to make things move easier. Mm -hmm. So slippery elm is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it may not be the most pleasant thing to taste is sometimes mm -hmm. it's in a powder form, but you know, there's other ways to take it. Mm -hmm. But having that opportunity to create um, a, a, a proper environment, mm -hmm. and then making sure that we like magnesium is a supplement, actually, it's not an herb, but mm -hmm. magnesium is sometimes uh, people may not have enough, especially if like, you know, mm -hmm. if I see situations where there's constipation, but also the person has migraines, they have muscle spasms, those are all ideas that hmm, magnesium is probably very deficient. Yeah. And it's common, it's very, it's a very common deficiency. So that's also something that allows more water to come into the bowels. Mm -hmm. And that way you can keep it moving because it's not going to create that dependency that some other herbs can. So people need to be careful. They need to speak to a health practitioner to understand what works for them. Sure. It sounds mm -hmm. like constipation and bloating kind of are uh, go hand in hand, you know? That's yeah. Happens, right? Yeah, they do because you're, if you have bowels that are not moving adequately, that are mm -hmm. very slow and staying there, mm -hmm. extra fermentation is happening mm -hmm. and that is where the bloating is coming from. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, you're backed up, Mm -hmm. There's going to be more distension. Things are in your digestive tract that should not be. So it's just more and more of that ad additional mm -hmm. um, fecal matter and mm -hmm. then fermentation and bloating. So it's just it's so it's such a common um, like two symptoms that also happen together because a lot of people say I have a lot of bloating. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of abdominal discomfort mm -hmm. and I'm not going to the bathroom. It's very yeah. linked. So, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the diarrhea, the opposite of constipation. Mm -hmm. So that also, right, that there's no bloating in that. Uh, I'm just trying to understand. You know what? There, there may or may not be. And it just depends on that individual because sometimes with diarrhea, it can be more of a stomach upset, stomach mm -hmm. discomfort, and less mm -hmm. um, bloating but it can happen at the same time. Like it can happen together because if we think about an individual who may have um, constipation, they have frequent uh, episodes of that, but then when they do go to the bathroom, they have multiple multiple times that they need to use the bathroom and then it turns to diarrhea. Yeah. So it's like it can happen at the same time and they have bloating at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, we look at what is the underlying cause there because mm -hmm stress can is plays a huge factor in the way like you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. the the brain gut connection how mm -hmm. stress impacts our ability for the um digestive tract to move things mm -hmm. along because it will it will halt and slow down once you're in a stressful environment and it doesn't have to be an actual stressful environment like you're being chased it can just be your perception of stress right you have mm -hmm. a lot of emails to catch up on you're you know helping to manage your kids homeschooling for instance just a lot of things that are going on and having your nervous system be overstimulated so that can absolutely um, show up as making things move through your digestive tract too quickly and diarrhea and it can also slow things down so again depending on the individual and how their body um manifests that mm -hmm. is is something we we look at sure all right so what are the three or four things that you would like people to at least do on a regular basis mm -hmm. to, right to maintain absolutely yeah. yeah and there's so many things that are well within reach and well within mm -hmm. accessibility and are free mm -hmm. so like one thing when we talk about stress because it's so right. linked to making our digestive system work optimally mm -hmm. in terms of managing that stress mm -hmm. is before before meals especially but even at any time mm 
-hmm. We are so used to, you know, doing things at the same time. So what's useful is that mm -hmm. if you're going to use a breathing technique called box mm -hmm. breathing, mm -hmm. and it's something where you're going to just visualize a box with four sides, inhale for a count of four, hold yeah. your breath for a count of four, Mm -hmm. exhale for a count of four and hold mm -hmm. that breath for a count of four so okay. what this is doing is tapping into your nervous system to help calm it down mm -hmm. and then that helps to tell the digestive system okay we're in a state to for rest and digest because that's mm -hmm. the part of the nervous system that is helpful so breathing before eating take, you know do that five times making sure you're having adequate movement throughout the day mm -hmm. even like simple um, yoga positions if people do practice that 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 use a lot of twisting motions you know like mm -hmm. doing simple inversion simple twists mm -hmm. uh, bridge pose for instance and spinal twists so simple things that work with your body but keep moving and even especially after meals mm -hmm. getting enough water because you don't don't want to count caffeine and green tea as part of that so just be mindful mm -hmm. and then fruits and veggies they have the parts of fiber that we need in mm -hmm. order to use for the digestive tract and then to feed our bacteria so those mm -hmm. four fundamentals are mm -hmm. what I would love for people to just keep top of mind sure and someone commented on Indian gooseberry is also good for gut health. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's called, you know, there is, there is a Ayurvedic herb Ayur, uh, called Trifula, which is- uh, Right. Right, which is of three fruits. Um, and, and that's uh, actually <clears throat> given multiple times, as many times for cleansing and digestive issues as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. That's so true. Yes, that's absolutely. So thank you for pointing out uh, whoever pointed that out. Yes, we are just talking of a very general level, but that's a great point. Yes, fantastic. I love that. Yes. All right. Anything else? Closing comments? Any questions? I see quite a few people are watching. You are welcome to uh, put any comments and questions. We are coming up with wellness program on gut health, uh, you know, with Dr. Roxanne. Yes. Trifula super like someone just said that. Oh, great. I'm glad that people are finding things that they, they find <laughs> useful for themselves. That's good. Absolutely. All right. Uh, what would you like to close it with, um, Dr. Rosemann? You know, I would like to close it with if you or if yourself or anyone that you know are dealing with digestive issues and you're and the thing is, it's like if you're if you're unsure of what it's related to. Yes. You know, speak to somebody if you're unsure that um, why it's always happening, whether it's diarrhea, bloating, constipation, definitely speak to a practitioner to help understand the root cause. Because some people, they just think it's OK, it's this food that's causing it. I will never eat it for the rest of my life. And mm -hmm. that's not that's not um, the best solution as well, because we want the goal is to feel like you can, you know, live your best life, enjoying the things that you enjoy. So instead of feeling like you're restricting things in your life or feeling that you're very confused about what's going on, get someone on your side to figure it out for you. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. then the other things, simple things that Dr. Roxanne talked about, we can all do it up by ourselves, right? The yoga, yeah. program, the breathing, the, the eating the right foods and all that. But if problems persist, yeah, take it lightly because gut health is very critical. Very critical. Yeah, there's so much more to talk about that we can't today, but just to know that it is very critical to your overall well-being. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. You, you're welcome to give us comments, feedback, how we are doing. We are bringing sessions every single day, either on FB Live or on Insta. So let us know, please. With that, thank you so much.